All right, guys, so we're going to try something a little new today. What I wanted to show you guys today is, you know, well, first of all, how many of you guys have ever, you know, etched your own circuit board? You know, you've used the toner transfer method or maybe you've used the laser uh, etching method that I've shown in previous videos. And, you know, you're using ferric oxide like we all do. We go on Amazon or wherever you go to get, you know, etching materials and, you put in the ferric oxide and it turns all black and it's expensive and it's a pain to deal with. Well, I wanted to show you guys a way cheaper, at least in some areas, way cheaper way to etch your circuit boards. So basically what we're going to be using today is hydrogen peroxide. You can get this at really any drugstore. Uh, hydrogen peroxide, 3%. A uh, bottle of that will go you will go a huge way. I mean, one bottle of this is like 88 cents, I think. And, you know, this will last like six months, depending on how many boards you make. The other thing, and this is the one that's a little bit harder to get, is muriatic acid. Now, muriatic acid, I believe it's used for like cleaning concrete or like dealing with the pH in a swimming pool. Uh, you can also pick this up, probably not at, you know, your, your local drugstore, but at like a hardware store, Lowe's, Home Depot, whatever your hardware store is, you can usually find this stuff. Oh, look at that. Etches concrete. So we're going to use this and hydrogen peroxide to create our etching solution for today. Now, a few words of warning. We have acid. Okay, guys. So when you're dealing with acid, there are a couple things you need to make sure you do. First, I'm going to grab them in a second. You need some, some gloves. You need to protect your hands. Uh, the other thing that you're going to want to have, especially if you're doing this indoors like I am, you're going to need a respirator of some sort. So when we mix these two chemicals, uh, they end up creating our etching solution, but a byproduct of that, at least, you know, especially right when you just mix it, is that they can gas off a little bit. And I believe through reading that if mixed in the wrong ratios, this stuff actually creates chlorine gas, which is deadly. Uh, so don't do that and, and make sure you mix things in the right ratios. But yeah, so it's basically just these two things. And you know, this is, you know, maybe less than $10 and it, this will last for years. So, respirator gloves uh also what we're going to be using today uh this is optional but a hot plate so if you heat your etching solution up it etches quicker uh you don't want to heat it too much because then it'll start creating all sorts of nasty fumes but somewhere around 100 degrees i've found 100 105 you know you don't really want to go much above 100 110 degrees fahrenheit so if, international people this is in Fahrenheit uh, and also optionally is a little flashlight and this is going to be useful we'll be able to peer through our board and see as things are etching we'll be able to see how far along they are so a flashlight is also really useful all right so let's put that aside for now uh, lastly you're also going to want a little container to mix uh, or to measure out your solutions. I think this is a little 1.5 ounce container. So here's what we're gonna do. I have a little basin here that is going to hold everything. And basically what we do is mix in two parts hydrogen peroxide to one part, this is not Diet Coke, this is the acid, uh, to one part the acid. So I'm going to hop away just for a moment, put on some gloves, put on my mask, and mix these two things together. All right, back with some gloves. And I did just realize that if I put the mask on, well, then I'm not gonna be able to talk, uh, or you guys won't be able to understand me. So uh, I'm gonna take my life into my own hands here. I've done this a few times. I, I'm fairly comfortable with it, uh, but I do normally wear a mask, uh, but you know, if you don't have one of these or you don't want to buy one, then do it outside. You know, if you do it outside, you have open air, you'll be a fair bit safer. All right, so like I said, 
we're going to go to, for a two hydrogen peroxide to one uh, uh, muriatic acid here. So the way I do this, and like I said, you really do not need a whole lot, is I basically fill, whoa, brand new bottle. I fill one entire little bit of this, uh, this little condiment container here. I fill that up, put that in, and you always want to mix your base with your acid, all right? So basic chemi chemistry class, don't do the acid first, always do the base first. So we put one of these whole containers in, or just about a whole container. So now this stuff is real nasty, but we're gonna put in about half a container's worth of this, of the muriatic acid. All right, so we have about half of that, put it in there, and you probably can't see it, but at least for me, I can actually see a couple little fumes kind of wafting up off of this. That's, you know, nasty. We don't like it. Um, God, it smells bad too. But that should be pretty good for us. Now, I am going to use a hot plate here. So I'm going to just get this warmed up. And now I will also remind you guys that this is a corrosive process, all right? So th the, the liquid in here might look clear and might look pretty, not, you know, not dangerous, but even just a couple drops of it totally started to destroy the stainless steel of my hot plate here. So this stuff is no joke. You really, really want to be careful with it because you just, you don't want to get it on anything that you don't want to destroy or, or etch. So I'm going to warm this up and then once it's all up to heat, we'll come back and start etching. All right. And we're at about 98 coming up on a hundred degrees here. And you can see I'm using a laser thermometer because I don't want to dip anything in here. If I dip anything in there, that's like got metal on it, a thermal probe or anything, it's going to corrode. So if you are using a hot plate, I do also recommend a little uh, laser thermometer, 105 degrees, that is totally enough. We'll turn the hot plate off. I'm gonna leave it on the hot plate just to have that ambient heat, but we've now turned it off. All right, so now we just put the board in and we take, I use these kind of wooden Q-tips here, but you can use, you know, whatever you want. And I just kind of rub it you know, keep, keep it flowing over and you can actually see that the etchant turns a little bit green and that is the copper wearing off of the board and into the solution. So we're just going to do this for a few minutes and it really shouldn't take very long before we start to see uh, light coming through the other side when we use our flashlight. Uh, now, as I'm doing this, I did want to take a little aside. Uh, talk to some of you longer term, it kind of works viewers. And, you know, I've actually, I've been kind of gone for the past six months. And I wanted to talk a little bit with you guys about that. Uh, you know, where I've been, what I've been doing. Um, I'm actually going to take this hot plate away. I think we're pretty good now. All right. So, you know, I'll be honest with you guys. It kind of works as a, it's a side project of mine. Um, you know, I work as an educator during the, the school year, uh, September through May or whatever. Uh, and so, you know, work gets in the way, uh, you know, and that's usually why, you know, starting in the fall, my videos do tend to slow down, but this year they really did stop for about six months. And, you know, I wanted to talk to you guys about why that is. So, you know, basically as somebody who makes videos on YouTube, it's really hard to not immediately just try to cater to the fans. Um, start making videos that I think you guys want to see. And that's just, you know, it can be fun, but at the same time, it starts to feel a little fake. Like I'm just making stuff for other people. Um, so I took a few months, kind of sort of thought about where I want the channel to go. And I've kind of decided that what I want to do is less like formal tutorials and more something like this, where I'm just kind of talking to you guys doing something because, you know, that's a lot more fun for me. And if I, I feel like if I'm having fun, 
then maybe you guys will have a little bit of fun too, or you get to know me, you know. So I'm going to try to do more videos like this that might be a little rambly. You guys know me, I'm rambly, but you know, they're, they're less formal. Um, you know, it also takes a lot more time to make a formal video. Okay. So already look at that. We can actually see light just coming right through. We don't even need the flashlight, but if I take my flashlight, we can see, look at that in just like what a minute or two, two minutes. I don't know how long I ramble for. We've basically etched the whole board. Now I'm going to put it back in because one of my mottos for etching is if it looks done, put it back in. So looks done to me, but I'm going to put it back in, keep going a little bit, just keep wiping it. And hopefully, you know, you can also kind of tell if you look at it from the front, you can see it when you shine the light through it, you should be able to see really clearly. So we can see that this looks pretty much etched to me. So I'm going to call that a finished etched board. Now, obviously there's more to do on this. I need to you know, clear off my mask. I need to drill all the holes, solder all the components, but just in terms of etching, I mean, if we took out all the words I said and just did this, that took, you know, th five minutes. So this is a great way to etch your boards. If you have access to uh, hydrogen peroxide and muriatic acid, they really make a good etching solution. And I will say, you know, it only lasts for about a day. I've now put the board in water to kind of neutralize everything. Uh, the solution, this, you know, it's turned bright green now. Um, it lasts for about a day, uh, you know, a day's worth of etching. You keep etching, you know, you might, you know, if you try to do 10 boards, it might start to wear out. But it lasts for about a day, and we used very little. You know, we only used one and a half of these little, you know, we used like two ounces worth of liquid. So... It's really economical, really cheap, really easy to deal with. And I wanted to show that to you guys. So thank you guys for watching. Thank you to all my Kind of Works fans who've stuck with me through this time when I haven't put anything out. Uh, I am going to try to keep putting stuff out now more consistently in a format more like this. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for watching. It's been a pleasure. And I will see you all next time.